Hello everyone, my name is Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com. Thank you so much for joining me for the broadcast today. I'm gonna to be talking about collagen. I'm gonna be talking about silica, uh, but most importantly, I'm gonna be talking about uh, collagen. Is it the fountain of youth or an edible hoax? Are you falling prey to slick marketing and buying collagen supplements of all kinds? Um, I'll also be talking about how and when you should supplement with collagen, um, why there's no point in taking collagen unless you're getting enough silica as well. I'll be talking about silica deficiency symptoms, why most people are silica deficient, uh, why most silicas don't absorb well and which forms do absorb really well, and which ones detox you and which don't and why silica-rich waters like Fiji really don't help that much to boost silica levels, much less detox or detox aluminum, and how the right form of, of silica is not only important as a beauty mineral and plumping up your skin and giving you healthier hair and nails and bones, but it's also amazing at heavy metal detox. So we'll get more into that. So that's what we're covering on this Facebook Live today. So first I wanna talk about collagen. So is this the fountain of youth or are people falling prey to marketing and buying really expensive supplements? So in my opinion, you want to make sure that you're getting enough collagen in your diet. And it's not that difficult to do to get enough of that. Um, you know, the, the reason you want collagen is, you know, because collagen and fibers formed by it are responsible for the biochemical properties of the skin, Act, you know, allowing it to act as an organ of protection from external trauma and infection and viruses. And they present as an essential component of the structural integrity of the connective tissue. And collagen is present in large quantities in the skin and the bones and the joints. But a reduction in the amount of collagen in the skin or do you have a reduction in the amount of collagen in your skin about 1% a year after 21 years of age? And this uh, results in thickness reduction, elasticity loss, which is directly related to wrinkle depth. And then this loss also accelerates after menopause for women. They have a much, much more rapid loss of collagen in their skin and just corresponding also with bone loss as well. Um, but you don't necessarily need to supplement with collagen. Uh, you can get what you need from your diet if you eat a healthy, well-balanced diet. So if you don't eat a good diet, you might benefit from a collagen supplement. So um, how to make collagen naturally. Um, when your body makes collagen, it combines amino acids uh, like the nutrients you get from protein-rich foods like beef and chicken and fish, beans, eggs, and dairy products. And this whole process of collagen synthesis also requires vitamin C, zinc, and copper, which a lot of people don't get enough of. But you can get vitamin C by eating amla berry powder or amalaki powder. I put that in smoothies, uh, you know, every time I make a smoothie. You can also get it in strawberries, citrus foods, fruits, red and green peppers, tomatoes, broccoli, and greens. Um, you can get copper and zinc from eating meats, from eating fish, nuts, uh, whole grains, and beans if those are tolerated uh, by you. And so you can also get uh, those nutrients in supplement form, zinc or copper in supplements, and liver also a very rich source as well. Um, but the best collagen boosting food is bone broth. That I recommend making it yourself, but there's lots of good companies out there that sell high quality organic grass fed be, uh, bone broth, but it's very expensive. Um, I mean, for the what you pay for a little tiny pint or two pints of bone broth, you can make a whole batch of it and it's super, super simple. I have a recipe on myersdetox.com for how to make chicken bone broth and I love that I make that and have it for a snack sometimes use it in cooking that's the best source of dietary collagen and then uh, I seem to have lost my camera here not sure what's going on 
Um, but the best, uh, so also bone, bone broth that draws collagen out of the beef, chicken, or fish bones, leaving a flavorful liquid that you can drink straight up or just use in dishes. And uh, the uh, collagen here, I think I lost my camera. You also want to make sure that whatever you're purchasing, whatever you're buying, um, collagen supplements or bone broth or what have you want to make sure it's organic, preferably grass fed. You're going to get lots of glyphosate and pesticides and other really nasty contaminants in those foods. Um, but second best is supplementing. Um, so if you're eating lots of protein, vegetables and fruit, you don't need to supplement collagen. Sorry, you just don't. Um, and uh, collagen is marketed under the terms hydrolyzed collagen, collagen peptides, or collagen protein. And but quality matters. You know you want to make sure that, it, like I said, it's grass fed or organic because um, you're going to get metals, glyphosate, pesticides, and other chemicals because they're essentially cooking down the hooves and the tendons and other animal parts, the parts that aren't consumed as, as food. So they take all that, they cook it down, and they make collagen and gelatin and other things out of it that then you is turned into powder and put into your protein drink and smoothie. It's delicious. Um, so uh, one thing, one, one mistake, though, that people make, they may be taking all these collagen supplements and collagen peptides and what have you, but they're missing one key ingredient, and that is silica. There's no point in taking tons of collagen unless you're also getting enough silica in your diet. And it's actually difficult to get enough silica from your diet, unlike collagen. So why is that? So um, silica is important for the optimal synthesis of collagen and for activating hydroxylation enzymes that are important in the formation of the collagen network, which you know improves skin strength and elasticity. So without silica, you can eat uh, and supplement with collagen all day long and it won't be as effective with, without adequate silica. But many people are deficient in silica. So defi uh, silica deficiency symptoms include uh, brittle nails, thinning, brittle hair, or hair that's falling out easily, wrinkles, sagging, crepey skin, osteoporosis and osteopenia, uh, stiff, inflexible joints, uh, tendons, and ligaments, shrinking or weakening muscles, uh, joint pain or osteoarthritis, and gastrointestinal problems due to thinning of the lining of your digestive tract. So those can all be signs of silica deficiency. Um, your nails are very affected by the presence of silicon because this is the predominant mineral in their composition. So without enough silica, you're going to have weak, brittle nails that break easily. And um, it's also shown that, um, uh, that in the case of the hair, it's suggested that higher silicon content results in a lower rate of hair loss and increased brightness or increased luster and shine in the hair. There was even one study with 50 healthy volunteers aged 40 to 65 years old that had clinical signs of facial photo aging. And the, they measured the effect of taking uh, silica supplements in the form of OSA or orthosilicic acid. And they looked at the scare, uh, skin, hair, and nails. And the supplement was taken for 20 weeks or four months, and they took 10 milligrams a day of this orthosilicic acid. And this is the first randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial that showed positive results in the skin after the intake of the silica. And at the end of this period, there was significant improvement in the skin surface, its mechanical properties, and significant improvement in the fragility of the nails and hair in the group using the OSA, or orthosilicic form of silica. And so let's talk about why people are deficient in silica. So there's a few different reasons. So Number one, if they don't eat enough fruits and vegetables, silica is what makes a lot of vegetables shiny. Like I've had 
very shiny um, Swiss chard before, or you have you can have shiny vegetables, shiny green peppers. So that's silica. It gives them kind of this bright luster. So if you don't eat enough of those fruits and vegetables, you won't get enough silica in the diet. Um, a lot of people are, are, are avoiding grains in their diet, and this is uh, probably the most abundant source of silica in the diet. Uh, but it's fine if you don't tolerate grains. Um, number three, people get actually have a very poor absorption rate of silica from food. There's about a 3% absorption rate from food. And then number four, then if they have poor gut digestion and therefore poor absorption, they'll probably absorb even less, even if they're getting silica in their diet. So a lot of things working against us to get adequate intake of silica. So uh, there's a lot of different plants with active uptake mechanisms such as rice, wheat, corn, barley, soybean, and pumpkin that bioaccumulate silicic acid in their cell walls where it starts to crystallize. And so these cereal crops are the best food sources of silica in the human diet, but a lot of people aren't eating those today, so they're not getting silica. And uh, a lot of people also have reduced stomach acid. Uh, you have reduced stomach acid as you get older, if you have lots of stress, heavy metals can reduce stomach acid production, and then you're, you're gonna get less absorption in that way also. And so I'm gonna talk about different forms of silica because this is the biggest question that I get from people is you know i'm taking horsetail or i'm taking this form of silica is that is does, will that work and so there's a wide variation in silica bioavailability within supplements ranging from a one percent absorption rate all the way up to 30 percent sometimes more depending on the chemical form of the silica and so number one, there's food sources of silica. Horsetail is a very popular one that people take to add silica. It's in a lot of silica supplements, but frankly it's added because it's cheap. It's sold as a silica supplement because it's cheap and it has a really low one to 3% absorption rate. Very, very, very low. So you're taking it, but it doesn't matter what you consume. It only matters what you absorb. So you have to factor this in when choosing supplements. And then there's a colloidal silica that, that has about a 7% absorption rate. So not terribly spectacular. That's really popular in Germany. Um, and then there's a choline stabilized OSA or choline stabilized orthosilicic acid. Um, that's the form that's in my activated silica and that has about a 17% absorption rate, which is pretty good comparatively. Um, but then you have what's called an MST form of silica, and that sound, it has a 30% absorption rate. So that sounds really great, right? Well, it has a higher absorption rate, but it also has a very high excretion rate, which is much faster than all of the other forms. So it, it absorbs a lot, but it excretes much faster, so it stays much, you know, less time in your body, and so you have less time to absorb it. So, you know, I use silica with my clients to detoxify them of heavy metals, so I don't give people the MMST form because it doesn't really work very well for detoxification. Uh, there was even a recent study that showed that hair aluminum was decreased by about 7% with choline stabilized orthosilicic acid, which is the form in my activated silica, but only 4% reduction when the person used MMST or the, the participants in the study used MMST. And both were tested, both groups of people were tested at a dose of 10 milligrams of silica per day for five months. And so the OSA form works much better for detoxification because they were absorbing much more of it and it was staying in their body for longer. Um, so there's a lot of marketing out there for some forms of silica that have MMST and they have little graphs showing, oh, it has the best absorption. But again, there, there's other factors to consider like excretion rates. And then there's silica rich waters. Well, what about those? So, I don't recommend drinking 
uh, waters like Fiji water to improve silica in the body. Every little bit helps, but uh, you also get silica in tap water. So that's a very you know legitimate form of uh, getting silica as well. But it, you're not gonna get really a lot of silica. I know Christopher Exley uh, really popularized this, popularized drinking Fiji water. And there's other silica rich waters out there as well. And, um, and yeah, hey, if you're buying bottled water, why not buy a silica rich mineral water? I think it also has a really nice mouthfeel. It kind of feels a little bit more like full and heavy in your mouth and it's, uh, you know, uh, like it has benefits, it's silica rich, but you're not getting the concentrations that are needed for adequate detoxification or uh, it's an insoluble form of silica. So you're not really having a high absorption rate of that as well. So don't drink Fiji water thinking that you're going to meet your silica needs or really have any meaningful movement in heavy metals out of your body or aluminum as a result of drinking Fiji water. Um, you know, there's, uh, like I said, a lot of uh, people out there that are drinking Fiji water, trying to remove aluminum in their body. I've seen tons of stuff on Facebook and comments on Facebook, I'm drinking Fiji water to get rid of aluminum, but you know, it, it just is a, adequate enough. So say, let's do the comparison. So for the same amount of money, say about $30, you get 15 small bottles of Fiji. It's about a half a liter bottle of Fiji for the price of one bottle of silica that will last for two months. So for the, the monetary investment, uh, you're going to have far, far better results of getting a bottle of ortho silicic acid or OSA or my activated silica. Um, this is my activated silica right here. This is the best form of silica to improve silica levels, to improve your hair, skin, nail, bone health, to plump up wrinkles. Tons of studies, tons and tons of studies that show it improves the appearance of fine lines, it plumps up your skin, and it's important and uh, needed for anyone taking collagen or looking to boost their collagen, you have to have silica along with that for it to work optimally. So that's my recommendation for that. And another benefit of silica is that it's shown in the research to detox heavy metals. And um, so I talk about this a lot. Anyone who follows me knows that I'm constantly talking about you know, heavy metal detoxification and using natural ways to go about that, ways that um, help to mineralize your body while at the same time pushing heavy metals out. That's one of the best ways and safest ways to go about detoxification. So in the research, it's shown that my activated silica will help to remove arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, cesium, antimony, barium, and some free floating iron as well. A lot of people have iron overload. This is a big problem. So activated silica gets a lot of different metals. And why is that? The specific chemical form of activated silica binds on to what are called trivalent metals. And these are just, it's about, valence is about bonding. So this specifically binds on, grabs on to these metals deeply embedded in their tissues and pulls them out. It works like a chelating agent where it grabs onto metals and helps them exit the body quicker where it wouldn't otherwise. And so, uh, a lot of people take binders for detoxification, but those kind of only go through your gut usually. Some of them go through your bloodstream, but they don't go deep into your tissues to pull stuff out. You have to use natural chelators like my activated silica to pull these metals out. And these metals I just listed, the arsenic, aluminum, tin, thallium, cesium, very potent mitochondrial poisons and in various ways they impede your mitochondria's ability to produce energy in your body. So one of the big underlying causes of fatigue are these toxic metals 
that are poisoning enzymes that transport nutrients into your mitochondria. So you've got to get rid of these metals to restore energy, to restore energy production. There's a lot of different underlying root causes of fatigue, but I assure you heavy metals are a big, big cause and 100% a factor anyone that's dealing with chronic fatigue or feel they feel tired a lot. So this is my number one recommended form of silica. Um, I'm gonna post this right now. We have a special going on right now. If you guys want to stock up on some of the silica for yourself, I'll leave the comment right here. Unfortunately, we sent one email about this yesterday and we already sold out of all of the stock that we have. So right now it's on pre-order. So you'll get it, it'll ship on October 1st, maybe a couple days after that. So if you wanna stock up, we are uh, we have a smoking deal right now for you guys. Just click on the link and learn more about that. And you can learn more actually about what I talked about on this Facebook Live about exactly how silica is the number one beauty mineral. Um, I've been taking it for years. And I mean, I turned 47 this year and I just feel like because I started taking it about about three, maybe four years ago, that it's really reversed the clock for me. I feel like I have less wrinkles. I feel like my skin is really plump and young looking. Um, I feel like my hair is like it's thicker and stronger. Um, my nails are really, really hard where they used to always bend. Now they're like really hard. And I just, I just noticed all my clients when they start doing my program and I recommend activated silica to them, they turn into the really healthy, fluffy chia pets. <laughs> They're always really happy because they notice that the hair, their hair, skin, and nails are getting a lot healthier when they're trying to do their detox. So it's kind of funny, and that side effect. As they aren't coming into my program trying to improve their health or their beauty. And they're, I'm sorry, they're not coming to my program to try to just improve their beauty, but that's a side effect of uh, taking the activated silica for detox. So um, I'm gonna answer your guys' questions that you guys have about collagen or silica. So everyone, thanks so much for joining me. So Leslie, so do you need a binder with this too to get the metals out? So it is recommended any time that you're taking a supplement that grabs on the metals and removes them, it works better if you take a binder. You are going, you can take this without taking a binder. Your body will excrete the, uh, the metals and whatnot, but some people do have detox symptoms, especially if they have a lot of aluminum in their bones. They can kind of feel like they're getting achy bones and taking a binder will help to reduce those detox symptoms where maybe they're feeling uncomfortable or feeling tired or what have you. Uh, there's a lot of different symptoms that can come with detox. So taking a binder dramatically reduces detox symptoms. So it's recommended, but you don't have to. Some people, or the majority of people don't feel anything when they take the activated silica. They just notice their hair, skin, and nails improve. But um, I recommend a binder with it. Um, what I recommend is my Citricleanse binder. Um, I have that right here, and this is something that I have, uh, that we have in the star, my store also, it's store.myersdetox.com. This is a wonderful binder, and it's what I recommend to my clients, it's what I take every morning. Um, so next question, so uh, what about anemic people? So I'm not really sure uh, what the question is in relation to, if it's in relation to can you take collagen or what have you. Um, but uh, so, so Karen, again, is, is, is it a naturally occurring silica? I thought it has to be naturally occurring in order to bind the metals. No, it does not have, something does not have to be naturally occurring. That's totally false. Um, naturally occurring silica actually is the worst form for detoxification because most forms of silica are insoluble and then they have to be broken down by the stomach acid to then um, get into a form, the orthosilicic, orthosilicic acid, the OSA form, your body will actually break natural silica down into OSA to then bind onto metals. But again, naturally occurring forms of silica have a very low absorption rate because they are insoluble. 
And so, but when you take something in a concentrated form like this activated silica, it's choline stabilized. So they took choline, which a lot of people are deficient in as well. It's very, very important to get choline for detoxification. So they took this choline, they stabilize the silica with it. And so you just end up getting a lot more of it in your body it has a higher absorption rate. So um, it's like technically man-made, but it doesn't matter. Most of the silicas, the most effective forms of silicas on the market have been chemically altered, but you want that. So sometimes natural, so to speak, is not better. And certainly that's the case with this. Um, another great form of silica is intestinal metal detox, IMD. It's a quick silver product. That's another chemically altered form of silica that gets a whole different type of metal. Uh, it's also extremely expensive, but it's another uh, kind of example of a chemically altered silica that's altered in that way to improve its results for detoxification. And next question, so do people get Herxheimer reactions when using activated silica? Should we start slow? Some people do get, uh, they do get Herxheimer reactions or detox reactions, um, especially if someone is, is fairly ill, if they are extremely chronically fatigued, you probably want to start with one or two drops per day and then work your way up. The recommend dosage is about 10 milligrams, which is about 10 drops. Each drops about a milliliter or a milligram, same thing. Um, so if, like I said, if you are sick or you feel like you're typically sensitive to supplements, you probably want to do one or two drops a day to start. You can always increase. You can always increase, increase the dose. And uh, a lot of people actually will, will take this to improve their hair, skin, and nails and notice that they might start feeling more tired, they might get achy bones, or they might feel, sometimes people feel headachy if they're getting rid of arsenic or aluminum. Um, but like I said, not everyone experiences that. If you take it with a binder, like my Citra Cleanse binder, you're very, very unlikely to experience detox symptoms. So, because the, the binders, that's its purpose, is to more quickly remove the metals that will be floating around in your body, in your your gut, in your blood, in your bloodstream, and uh, absorbing any of the toxins that are grabbed onto and chelated by the activated silica. So that dramatically reduces uh, the excretion of them. They get out of your body faster, so they cause less detox symptoms. And so IV lens, so will it pull out lead in the nerves? No, so activated silica does not get lead. This is, uh, lead is a divalent heavy metal. So divalent heavy metals are removed with different products than activated silica, which removes trivalent metals. So divalent metals are like lead, nickel, mercury, and each product, uh, each you know, metal has different things that are removed by it or help it to be removed. Lead, you can get rid of that with my Citra Cleanse. Very, very good. It's full of boron, tons and tons and tons of boron, and boron binds onto lead and really any heavy metal. Bor the boron in this, it's not on the label, but that's what this is made of. It's made from grapefruit citrus pectin and the pectin in this it's full of boron and that boron loves to bind on to different heavy metals and toxins binds onto them and then takes them out of your body so this is great for lead edta is also amazing for lead zeolites can help as well and uh, cilantro is also great so those are my go-to's if you're really high in lead you know go with the edta bring your levels down really fast um, and so, so you mentioned silica binds iron. So what about anemic people? Yes. Thank you for clarifying. So, um, it, this is only going to get a little bit of iron, um, if you do have anemia issues. So it'll get some flea, free floating iron in your blood. Um, but it's not going to dramatically reduce iron levels. It's not something you need to worry about if you are anemic. One thing about anemia is it's not always due to low iron in your body. Many times people have low ferritin because they're magnesium deficient. 
or their copper zinc levels are off or there's other things going on. It's not as simple as, oh, I have low iron and I'm anemic and I need to replace and supplement with iron. That's not how the body works. It's not that simple. Most people that are anemic, it is due to something other than iron deficiency. You can listen to my podcast with Morley Robbins on that. On uh, Just search for iron and Morley Robbins on MyersDetox.com and you will find that very, very eye-opening. And so, Kevin, thanks for joining us. So can we take this uh, whatever, what other supplements we are taking? Yes, you can take this with, with any type of supplement. Just don't take it at the same time as a binder. So don't take these two at the same time. You can take them on the same day but you want to take them about an hour apart, but this can be taken with any other supplement. So the activated silica can be taken with anything. So Karen, so is there a risk of getting too much silica in the body? Do you need to be careful how much you take? No, I don't think there's any risk of getting too much. Your body is naturally going to excrete in the urine. If you do get too much, I think your body, uh, you'd have a lot of different reactions and symptoms with detoxification. Um, and you would stop taking it before you got too much. But again, if uh, you take a uh, high amounts of it, your body just gets rid of it and excretes it. So no worries there. It's totally non-toxic. And so Chell, so thanks for joining us. So I have your silica but need to get the citricline still. Will activated charcoal work as a binder until I get the citricline? Yes, yeah, uh, activated charcoal, charcoal is a great binder. Um, I just don't recommend taking it on a daily basis because it can reduce minerals. It's indiscriminate. It works great because it just soaks up everything in your system. So it's wonderful if you have a known toxic exposure. Like if you go out drinking alcohol or if you use crack and you eat at a bad restaurant that's full of pesticides and toxins and you know it happens activated uh, charcoal is a great solution to reduce your your acute toxin exposure which is why they use it at hospitals it's amazing at reducing toxins in your bloodstream um, but on a daily basis it's going to reduce your mineral levels so we don't want that those are everyone's usually mineral de deficient as it is it's very hard to bring your mineral levels up as you guys know that may have been taking minerals for years we don't want to do things that deplete our precious minerals that are the spark plugs of our body. So I recommend only doing activated charcoal about once, maybe twice a week at the most. Um, but like I said, it's anything's fine to take it for a week. You know, like that's not going to harm you. So yes, that's perfectly, perfectly fine to take, just uh, use it on a limited basis. So everyone, thanks so much for joining me. That's all the questions that you guys have. So I'm going to go take my daughter to karate right now. <laughs> so thanks so much for listening and tuning in. I hope I opened your eyes to the benefits, uh, pros and cons of collagen and silica supplementation. Help you guys make them some distinctions there so that you aren't wasting your money on supplements that you don't need or that don't work. So thanks for tuning in. I do these Facebook Lives every day, every week at, or I, I should do them every day, but I do them every week at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Next week, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about binders. So we're, we're gonna go through each binder and talk about the pros and cons of each. And I'm also gonna talk about lead and how lead is killing more people than cancer. Chronic low-level exposure to lead is killing 412,000 people a year. Crazy new study that I'm going to discuss with you guys. And this is why I do what I do. And I want to wake you guys up to what is really going on in your body and how metals are causing your symptoms and what to do about it. So thanks for tuning in. Talk to you guys next week.